Good morning, Your Honor. A Supreme Court justice accused of fraud. The 7 Action News investigators first exposed her real estate dealings. Now the feds are taking action. Can she survive? It would be very difficult. The feds are accusing Justice Hathaway of fraud and money laundering. Good evening. I'm Carolyn Clifford. And I'm Stephen Clark. Now Justice Hathaway could lose her Florida home and a lot more. This is a story 7 Action News investigator Ross Jones broke back in May. Shouldn't you respond to these? These are important questions, Your Honor. Seven Action News reporter Tom Wade is live downtown. Tom, Judge Hathaway or her attorney, the one talking tonight about this? Well, Stephen, tonight we did reach out to Justice Hathaway's attorney. He did not return our call. Bottom line, Hathaway could be in big trouble. It's the Florida home that's now at the center of an ever-brewing scandal involving Michigan Supreme Court Justice Diane Hathaway, a home the U.S. attorney is now saying Hathaway and her husband essentially tried to hide so they could ditch $600,000 in debt on another property. She would have to put on a very strong defense and to do it quickly. Wayne State Law Professor Peter Henning, who used to be a federal prosecutor specializing in bank fraud, says Justice Hathaway's job could be in jeopardy. The allegations in the government's complaint is that this was intentional fraud by Justice Hathaway and her husband. So if the government can show that, that puts a substantial black mark on her record. As Professor Henning says, the latest filing accuses Hathaway of fraud and money laundering. The feds are now trying to seize Hathaway's waterfront Florida home. As the Action News investigators first reported, Hathaway and her husband transferred their Florida property to Hathaway's stepdaughter, allegedly in order to short sale one of their properties here in Michigan. Right now, the claims by the U.S. attorney are just part of a civil suit, but this could turn into a criminal case. Certainly the investigation has uh, produced evidence that shows there's a, a substantial chance that there was bank fraud involved here, but it may be that the prosecutors have evaluated the case and said civil uh, forfeiture is the best way to go rather than pursuing a full-scale criminal case, at least at this time. This evening, Supreme Court Chief Justice Robert Young released this statement. It is a dreadful development to have any sitting judge accused of fraud and money laundering. Just Justice Hathaway or her lawyer should clear the air and explain these transactions. And no word tonight from Hathaway herself. We'll keep you posted on any new developments in this story. Live outside the federal courthouse, I'm Tom Waite, 7 Action News. Carolyn, back to you. All right. Thanks a lot, Tom, for the update. Stephen? All right. Joining us now to put some of this in perspective, 7 Legal Analyst Tom Cranmer. And, I mean, it certainly sounds serious, and this is a justice. This isn't just a judge. It's a justice. It's a justice who sits in the highest uh, court in the state of Michigan, and it, it's a rather short complaint, but it certainly raises some very serious allegations. Now explain the difference between a civil and a criminal uh, complaint that we're dealing with here. Well, right now it's just a civil complaint, meaning that what the government is seeking to do is to forfeit some property that Justice Hathaway and her husband had, allegedly, which was part of this uh, scheme, if you will, to defraud a bank in connection with the short sale. Do you, do you but, see it going to a criminal Well, case? that's really the interesting question, Stephen. Oftentimes, in connection with these forfeiture actions, there's a criminal case that comes along. And the real question, as Professor Henning indicated just a few moments ago, is, is this the end of it? Has the government decided that it should be best be handled as just a civil case? Or is that the first shoe, and the second shoe might be coming along as a criminal case? All right, real quickly, what's your bet on that if you're a betting man? Well, it's hard to say, but uh, as I said, more often than not, uh, you see the criminal case follow the civil case. So we'll just have to wait and see. Tom Cranmer, thank you very much. Stephen, thank you.